Hey, this is Rocket Brain Surgeon, and today we're looking at Kamaran's map strategy. Fair warning, I will butcher that name every single time. Kamaran is a very old map that was removed for a time. The previous version had the cap at D9 and H2. This led to some very interesting fast cap strategies. But the biggest problem with it was the view range was cut short, so offensive action was basically impossible. Wargamer removed the map for several patches and then reintroduced it without what made it very interesting, the fast cap strategies, and kept the worst aspect of it, impossible offensive maneuvers due to continued invisible tanks across flat stretches of open area. Even though it's a campy map, we still want to be productive. And here are some different ways in this video how to be productive rather than just sit in the back of a bush all day. We're going to cover strategies for the middle, we're going to cover strategies for the 1 2 line and the 9 0 line. This is Garbad's replay, and you can tell he's being incredibly defensive. And that's because in the middle, when you're spotted, you'll typically explode almost instantly if you have uh, any exposure to the enemy. There's just way too many angles, so he's really hugging that building, and when he's lit, he, he just has to park in cover. It's possible to spot enemy tanks from the middle, however, it's a very high-risk strategy as, again, once you're spotted, you can explode almost instantly. You can be shot from the craziest of places in the middle. So uh, the places where the tanks are kind of collecting now or on the back side of that hill and using these buildings from cover from the west is very typical. The middle is important not because of spotting, though. It's because you can get a lot of different angles of shots at the enemy tanks. So when you're in the middle, your strategy is going to be more passive. The second you try to push across the island, you're going to die. It, there's just too much open space between you and A1, A2. Those tanks will kill you instantly. So don't, in general, push forward when you're on the middle island. You're going to notice that Garbad just sits on the back side of this building and takes shots where he can get them. So in the middle, you're typically not going to be firing towards A1, A2 or the A5-ish area in general. You're going to be firing more at the sides. You're going to be firing at the 1-2 line. You're going to be firing at the 9-0 line. That's where you have your angles and that's why this is so important. He's getting side shots on the E100 basically for free right now. If there are enemies on the island with you, you can try and play peekaboo with them if you can do it profitably. For example, you have much more alpha than they do. Uh, however, be very careful with it as you can get overexposed very, very quickly. Alright, so let's sum it up quickly here. The middle island strategy. First and foremost, you have to protect yourself. This is a very dangerous area, so make sure you play very defensively. You're shooting towards the 1-2 line and the 9-0 line. And for the love of crumb cake, do not try pushing from the island. It is instant death. Next up, we're going to look at a push from the 1-2 line. When you're attacking from the south, the 1-2 line is your best bet. The reason being is because you can see in G1, G2 and D1, D2, there are a bunch of houses. There is also a bit of cover in terms of view range cover, like bushes and trees. So you can work your way up through both hard cover and soft cover towards the A1, A2 areas where the main force of the enemy is going to be camping. The reason why pushing the 9-0 line from the south side is a poor idea is because when you get around A0, there is no real cover all the way to A1. Yeah, there's a couple houses, but now with the mechanics changed where you can shoot through cover, that's even a worse proposition. So you basically have to go across the entire map naked, and yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, that really doesn't work. So right now Garbad is in the Roomba and he's using the foliage and the hard cover of the rock just to hide, just to scope things out. Right now it's early in the game and we don't know where the main push is going to occur yet. 
one of the worst things on Comoran is you can turn a quarter and all of a sudden, boom, invisible tank force. And in something like the Roomba, he just wouldn't survive. So there's a scout in front of him that's actually moved up a fair ways, and he can be relatively confident that the main push is not coming this way. One of the keys on Comoran is to use the clock to your advantage. Oh, don't rush things. There is no point to rushing things. Uh, wait for someone else to get impatient. This map is almost always going to go to time just because you can't pull off a fast push in a pub game. That's not going to happen. So a couple of minutes have passed and the enemy looks like it's pretty passive at the moment. Garbat doesn't have any more targets to shoot around that area, and in World of Tanks, you're doing one of two things, shooting or preparing to shoot. Uh, don't just sit there waiting for something to happen. There is actively waiting and camping. There is a difference between those two. So Garbad moved up, and you'll notice that he has found a bush for view range tricks, and he also has some hard cover with the building beside him. He can't really push that quickly anyway, because he doesn't have a numbers advantage. Uh, there is a super pershing that's kind of going YOLO forward, and Garbad uses that as uh, kind of the canary in the coal mine, if you will. Uh, to advance to the next building. The Super Pershing is going to take the hit and not him. This is something I definitely don't do enough, using the windows in the buildings to shoot from a very well protected position. If you look at the middle of the map you'll notice that they're not trying to push off of the island, they're not trying to spot people on A1, A2, they are just sitting there waiting for shots. They have an enemy that's within 50 odd meters of them and they have no interest in going to flush him out. That's just a death sentence. I know what I said before of how you really shouldn't push the 9-0 line and what's happening in this game, they're pushing the 9-0 line. Well, part of that is there are five purples on Garbad's team. I mean five incredibly strong players. This battle was only going to end one way. And even then, this it's not the fastest game you've ever seen, but this is basically a raffle stomp in Camarin. This is as fast as you can realistically go without getting murdered by invisible tanks. All right, let's sum this up. For the 1-2 line, the main south push is going to come from here. Do not push from the north because you can't advance along the K line naked. Use foliage as you advance along the 1-2 line. Move from cover to cover, whether it's a soft cover in a building or a hard cover with a really hard building that can't be knocked down. Try to spot tanks on the 1-2 for artillery and tanks sitting on your island. And shoot tanks on the 1-2 and the island as they become available. And lastly, we're going to look at pushing down the 9-0 line. When spawning on the north side, this is where your main push should happen as you can move down the 9-0 line from cover to cover. Garbat is in the T-54, which is a very good tank for assaulting on the 9-0 line, as it has a very tough turret, good mobility, and good camo. So right now, he is zooming out, and he's going to stop and take a shot here. It looks like he's in the open, and he is in the open. However, uh, the angles are cut off from the majority of the enemy and this tank is the only one fast enough on the enemy team to be in that position. Artillery also is the French autoloader artillery which wouldn't be loaded yet so he can feel comfortable stopping in a, a seemingly weird spot. So a nice feature of pushing the 9-0 line is this little hill. You can move up the hill to fire on the middle. You can also move down the hill in between the building to cut off the line of sight from the K0 area. Priority number one when you're pushing is to help secure the middle. Otherwise when you're down in uh, G9, H9, that's where this hill doesn't offer any protection from the middle and your flank is just going to get shot up. It looks like there are a couple people that were looking toward the middle or were slow to load or were AFK for a bit. 
Uh, they're caught in no man's land right now. If Garbad were to be spotted at this point, all he has to do is reverse down that hill, and there are buildings and a small rise that will cut off enemy fire from a lot of different directions. Before you advance or expose yourself, know where safety is. A lot of the times it's simply reversing, but there are some times where it's not, where your only way to safety is actually forward. He gets spotted there, and again, like I said, he just pulls back down that hill, no problem. The only thing that can get him is artillery, which totally clicks him for half, half his health. There's a puppy on the 9-0 who tried to go into that J9, K9 area, uh, got spotted and died immediately. The situation on the middle island is clearing up, so once that is cleared up, then they'll be able to continue the push down the 9-0 line, but until that is, uh, they really can't move that way. It's only 3-1, but an important thing has happened. The resolution in the middle has been decided. Garbad's team has won the middle, which means they can start their advance. Garbad's platoon mate Sela starts his push into the 9-0 area. Now they'll be able to get shots on the J9-K9 area from both the 9-0 line and from the island. Once the tanks in the corner are lit up, they don't have a lot of defensive options. They have a small hill to hide behind, but it's only a, an eventuality once they're lit up that they will die. The rest of the game is just a one-way beat because the vision mechanic is the biggest defensive option and that has been taken away when someone invades the J9-K9 area. The 9-0 line is very similar to the 1-2 except reversed. The main push from the north is going to come down the 1-0. You're going to use the foliage to advance from cover to cover. You're going to try to spot tanks on the 9-0 and the island, and you're going to try to fire on the island as well as the 9-0. All in all, I really don't like this map. From the name that I can't pronounce and I always butcher, to its ridiculously campy nature, Camarin is just a poorly designed map. However, I hope some of the strategies laid out in this video help you to break up the camp fests in your games. Hope you enjoy. Happy hunting.